Investor Ventures, welcome back. My name is George, and I want to welcome you here. Uh, last week, unfortunately, I did not get my video out, and that was because I was trying to capture Comet Lemon, and I did capture it, and when I went to stack, everything just fell apart, and it wasn't working. So here we go. It's just about finished. So uh, let me see. Only one frame out of 65 will be stacked. So today, I'm going to walk you through my uh, stacking of Comet Lemon and, uh, you know, processing of that. Now, the first thing you want to do is uh, load up the picture files, which you saw that I did. Uh, you should be loading up your darks, flats, dark flats, and your biases. I did not do those. It was a conscious choice because these were shot on my Nikon D850. They were only 45 seconds. Uh, ISO is 1600. And I chose not to because uh, being shorter exposure, I wasn't too worried about the noise. Hindsight, I wish I hadn't uh, been lazy about it and done these other ones because I do have some vignetting that's showing up. I'll revisit shooting this comet again tonight. But anyway, let's continue. So your picture files loaded. Take the time, shoot the rest of them, load it up. And the next step is, is that you're going to want to register your checked pictures. Make sure that stack after registering is not checked because what we're after is a quality score on our images. And then you can see I hit OK. It's going to start up in just a second. It'll start scoring them. And then from there, I'm going to move on and select my highest quality image, which is right here. It'll bring it up. And I'm going to zoom in on the comet itself over here to the side. I am now going to left click on the uh, edit and comment mode. I'm going to move over here and I am setting the crosshairs. I'm setting the crosshairs in the best I can of the center of the comet. Okay, there it is. I've got the center of the comet selected. Uh, my next step is, is I'm going to move over here to settings, left click. Stacking settings, left click. I want the Comet tab. And I'm going to want stars and Comet stacking. Now you have different options here. Uh, standard stacking, Comet position is ignored. Your Comet's gonna be a bit fuzzy. Comet stacking, the Comet position is used, but your stars uh, are gonna lose some of their sharpness. And then the uh, third one is a bit of a compromise between stars and Comet stacking. One of the things is you'll notice that I only did nine images of the comet. My reason being is, is that the comet is moving at its own pace relative to the stars rotating in the sky. And I have found that uh, shooting hours of data doesn't necessarily help out because there's just too much relative movement between the, uh, the two. So I'm now going to click OK. My next step is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on Stack Checked Pictures. And then that will go ahead and bring up the window here. Actually, I need to hit cancel on this. I'm going to come to registered check pictures. And this time, what I need to do is automatic detection of hot pixels. So it gets rid of them and stack after registering. There we go. Okay, now I will go ahead and click OK. And OK. This will now go ahead and process and stack the images, doing that compromise between the comet and the stars, keeping everything relatively sharp. This doesn't take very long because of the fact that I'm only working with nine images. And like I said, I prefer a shorter batch uh, because of the relative movement between the two. It's, it's just kind of, kind of gone wonky on me in the past. So um, that's why I do what I do. So we'll have this in just a moment. It's finishing up. There is my image. It is generated. Looks pretty darn good. And we'll come over here and we are now going to tell it to save picture to file. And this is going to put it back where I want. I'm going to give it its name. Lemon Stack. There we go, and down here it says embed the adjustments in the saved image, but do not apply them. Uh, I had some crazy stuff going on a long time ago where it was applying some auto adjustments it wanted to do. Um, please make sure this one is selected. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. 
There we go. It is saving this rather large TIFF image. And then in just a moment, I will join you over at Photoshop and we'll go ahead and get this edited. Okay, here we go. Uh, we are at Photoshop, loaded up the TIFF image in here. Now, originally the image uh, saved as a 32-bit. That's why this little warning comes up. So I'm gonna click OK, image, mode, and 16-bit. You see how it gets super bright right there. I'm gonna change this local adaptation to exposure and gamma, and that resets it. Now, you can see there's this vignetting that's going on on the uh, the outer edges, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. So um, first I'm gonna hit Control J, Control J to uh, double this. And the first thing I'm going to do from there is come up here to Image, Adjustment, and Threshold. And I'm going to slide this slider over to where I just start to enter in here. And from here, you can see this is the bright area of the comet. And we're going to click OK. Up here, I've got this window open to give me information for black and white point. Uh, shortcut key for this is F8. My next step is I'm going to zoom in on the comet area here. And I'm going to take a color sample. I am on, there we go, color sample. I want this one here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move into the image to where I have a good black point. And there we go, set that there. There's my black point. Now I'm gonna move into a nice bright star. I'll grab this one here. And this will be my, let's see if I can zoom in a bit more. Okay, and back to my color sampling tool. And here we go. Let me see if I can get over here. No, we'll go right here. Okay, and there is my sample number two. Okay, I can now take this threshold layer, throw that away. And what I am going to do next is zoom out here. Let's tell it fit screen. And what I need to do is do some neutralizing of this color on here. So first step I'm gonna do is hit Control L, and that will bring up my window here. And you can see over here, the lower this number is, zero would be pure black. I'm going to slide this over to where the data starts. Okay, now it's getting me down to about a 17. I know that I was shooting into, um, for me to shoot the comet, I was literally shooting into the glow of the Wasatch Front, that's the uh, mountain range here, and all of the city lights. So I, I'm not gonna hit exactly dark as I want. Let's take a look at my red layer, green layer, blue layer. Okay, I'm gonna get closer to black on my blue layer. Let's see here. Let's get me, I'm gonna take it down to about a nine. Let's do green, take green over to about a nine. Actually, I'm gonna leave it a bit there at the 10, uh, just because it's gonna help out the, uh, the green of the comet just a little bit. And then over on to my red. And I'm going to slide that over, click OK. There's also going to be a bit of a green cast because this is low in the atmosphere at the time. So here we go. Uh, you can see, as I was saying, that vignetting is coming out. It's one of those things, ugh, you know. Um, but again, I could have went out and reshot this, but I wanted to share and show, you know, this is what happens when you take shortcuts. Fortunately, I'll have another go at it tonight. All right, now I'm going to hit uh, Control M. And with that, I'm going to bring up my curves and I'm going to use my arc sine curve. This is typically I use this for uh, doing, you know, nebulas and everything. And uh, you can see where this vignette is really, really coming out. However, I do plan on uh, cropping down into this. So here I'm going to go control L and let's go channel by channel. And let's see here. We're going to bring this down. Oh, this is getting kind of ugly. Let's see here. Take that down to a 12. We're going to set everything down to a 12. Let's see. There we go. 
And finally, my blue, get that down to a 12. And of course, you say, but you're getting rid of some data. Well, some of that data is all of that light and everything that was, you know, forced up through the, um, the uh, lightning process. Okay, there we go. We've got that one. Let's go Control M. Let's do another arc sine curve. Let me see, do a 10. No, don't want that one. Let's undo that. I'm going to hit cancel. Control M. Let's do another arc sine 100. Okay, Control L. And I'm just going to bring all three of them down. Let's see. Gonna stop there. Okay. Whew. You can see how that vignette. Ugh. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go Control J. Let's go into Filter Camera Raw. All right. So here we go. Let's bring down some of this exposure. And let's go. Let's see here. about there let's bring up our highlights help make that stand out a bit there we go there we go oh, let's see here i think that looks a bit better let's push some vibrance up help make that green pop up a bit I might push just, there we go, just a bit more. And let's go ahead and hit OK on that. Uh, again, lesson learned, you can see that vignetting there. Uh, next up, let's go ahead and filter, and I'm going to do run the noise exterminator on that, and let that help clean that up. And I think that'll be about as much as I want to do with this. Uh, I may come back and tweak it and play with it a little bit more but uh you know that's how you can go ahead and you know stack and edit comet lemon i hope that i've shown that uh don't take a shortcut it's not good um i took in you know th this image could be better if i hadn't uh, been a bit lazy about it and uh, I will revisit this tonight, and I expect that I'll be able to get a, a better image. And uh, I definitely, you know, will not allow myself to take the uh, the shortcut. But I figure, you know what, you know, why show it to you perfect and, you know, let you see what uh, doing a shortcut can do to you and against you and how your data works out. Uh, while this is processing, I do want to say if uh, you like what you're seeing here at Astro Venture, consider liking, subscribing, and uh, ringing the bell and sharing the video out so that you can help uh, you know help us grow the channel. And uh, I will also be doing uh, another video on editing this image where I have also shot it through a Xenostar 81 telescope combined with a uh astro camera and mc 533 uh, one shot color pro so there we have it we have the uh the comet here and we'll go ahead and crop down let's get this down to where we would use it kind of helps to minimize out some of that uh vignetting but yeah hopefully you can see you know, taking a shortcut isn't necessarily the best way to go. So uh, I hope that helped you out. I wish you clear skies, uneventful nights, and, uh, you know, get out there and, and shoot uh, Comet Lemon and shoot Comet Swan.